Hi friends, over the last few weeks we've been learning about the Paschal Mystery and we've talked about the way that the Paschal Mystery is a paradox. It's a paradox because Christ dies and then rises again. Um, it's a mystery because it reveals to us who God is and the way especially that it reveals to us God's love and that God's love is so great, so powerful, and the, the, the love between the Father and the Son is so strong that it even raises Jesus from the dead. Starting today, we're going to be talking about the way that we too are offered this love and this life that raised Jesus from the dead. And that way that we're, we're offered this life is through our baptism. So we'll be talking about baptism for the next few times that I record a lecture for you. So um, the first thing I want to do about baptism is I want to actually tell you a couple of stories. And I know I know I had promised um, to tell you about my baptism. And I also want to tell you um, about Hilda's baptism. So sorry, while well, I get the Prezi to the right place. All right, so this is my daughter, Hildegard, my youngest. Um, this is the day of her baptism. And as you can see, if I zoom in, um, she's really fascinated. And if you look at the light that's reflecting in her eyes, um, you will see that she is really fascinated in this picture, even as a tiny baby, because she's looking at this beautiful stained glass window um, that's at the back of the church where she was baptized, St. John's Abbey in Collegeville, Minnesota. Um, and one of the things that I would like you to think about about baptism over the, last, the next few weeks is I would like you to think about one of our traditional understandings of baptism is that it gives us a new way to see. So our baptism isn't just um, one moment, but it's a gift that actually stays with us for our whole life and continues to give us the new life and the love that God wants to offer us. And one of the things that that love does for us is it opens our eyes to things that we might be unable to see without God's help. So sometimes um, when I find this hard to understand, I actually go back and I look at this picture and I think about Hildegard looking at this stained glass window. And maybe there are particular images or particular places that you've been that also make you feel like you're seeing with new eyes. So if so, that might be something to reflect on in the coming days. Um, so let me start by reading you um, one of the most traditional readings that the church uses to think about baptism and what baptism means. And so this is from the letter of Paul to the Romans, and that's the one I'm going to use today. And then in the upcoming weeks, I'll actually use a few other um, stories from the Bible also to think about what baptism means. So this one says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Um, so I want to walk through this one piece at a time. So Paul starts writing to the Christians living in Rome. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Um, so what Paul is talking about to the Romans is he's talking about a great gift um, that the Romans have been given in baptism. And actually, it might not seem to you at first um, that being baptized into death is a really great gift. So this too, um, with baptism, is a kind of a paradox where participating in Christ's death might seem at the first glance like something that we don't want. Um, but Paul goes on to say, therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. So what Paul goes on to say is that when we are um, participating in Christ's death, we also participate in what Paul says his newness of life, the new life um, that Christ has to offer. So I just want to remind you for just a moment 
um, that that newness of life is something that we talked about a few weeks ago when we were learning about the Trinity and the revelation of the Trinity on when Jesus died on the cross. So that newness of life is this um, spirit that the Father is breathing onto the Son in this image that I showed you in the last lecture. So when we think about um, the life that Christ receives from the Father um, that we also can participate in, um, I want to show you a few other images of what that might look like. So here's a picture um, of Christ being baptized in the River Jordan. And one of the things I like about this image is the way the Spirit actually is kind of coming down and embracing um, Jesus as he is standing there in the water. So for us too, uh, when we're baptized, God's love, God's spirit embraces us and brings us in to a new kind of relationship with God that we didn't have before and gives us a new way of living, newness of life um, that we wouldn't have without baptism so that we're called on to actually live in a new way. If you look at this image, this is um, a photograph of Salisbury Cathedral in Salisbury, England. Um, and one of the things I love about this image is in this image you can see they're hanging an art display of um, all of these doves. And these doves are a representation of the Holy Spirit. And to me, they kind of represent the way the Holy Spirit lives in each of us as Christians. Um, and yet all together we make one stream or one path um, um, by which God works in the world. So if you look into the font that you see at the bottom here, you can see this is a really interesting and unique baptismal font. And um, you can see the way the doves that represent the Holy Spirit in our lives are reflected here in the baptismal font. So this is another image that might remind us of the way that the Spirit's active in our lives. Um, one of the things that's interesting about the way the Holy Spirit acts in our lives is a lot of times when the Spirit is acting in us and we're trying to do God's work in the world, we're not really aware whether um, it's us that's making a good decision or whether um, God is leading us and guiding us and helping us make a decision. That's how the Holy Spirit works in us. The Holy Spirit is very gentle um, and very subtle and um, really lives within our hearts in a very in a very gentle way. So um, that's you might sometimes be aware that the Holy Spirit is helping you, but we know in our faith that the Holy Spirit is always helping us, even when it seems like um, that's not the case. So let me just finish today by reading you the rest of this passage from the book of, from the book of Romans, the letter to Paul of Paul to the Romans. He goes on um, with a real message of hope, I think. He says, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. So there's two things um, in this passage from the letter to the Romans that Paul thinks are gifts that stay with us from our baptism. The first one is that we are freed from our need to sin. Now, we're still going to make mistakes. I'm sure you know. Um, most of us are aware that we've made mistakes every day. Um, but uh, but you, you don't have to live in sin. Um, we have the opportunity, with the, with the help of the Holy Spirit, um, to refuse sin and to separate ourselves from sin. So that's one of the enemies that we're given freedom from in um, baptism. And the other one is death. So that doesn't mean we won't die, but it means that we have the eternal life that comes only from the Father. And so even though we will die, 
um, we always carry with us that eternal life of living in God's love. So today, as you know, is the Feast of All Saints Day. And one of the things that I want you to remember, we tend to think about the saints as if they're saints because they had a lot of willpower and they did a lot of good things. Um, but all the saints have done their good things through the power of the baptism um, by which God gave them God's own life so that they could overcome both sin and death. And that gift, that baptism and the Holy Spirit that it gives us is actually a gift that you have also received, that each of us have been given that gift. And so for all of us, the saints are not only a model, but they're also, they reveal to us who we are. So um, I hope you'll think about that as you listen to the hymn that I've put up as your assignment for this week. And I look forward to talking to you again next weekend.